Last week I talked about Harambe, and I got to thinking, do you think the kid that killed him, I know, he didn't kill him by his own hand, but he put the pieces in motion. Do you think the kid that killed Harambe is going to use that as an icebreaker in the future? Think about it. This kid is going to go to college, probably. Seems like that's still the standard route for most folks nowadays. Yeah, just not enough people are learning how to build their own business. If you take my course, these five easy steps will allow you to be your own boss. But I don't know if he's that much of an entrepreneur. We'll just say he's not. He's going to go to college, follow the traditional route. They're going to sit in that circle during orientation orientation week, and they're going to be like, does anyone have any uh, icebreakers? Let's go around, actually. Let's say our name, our major, and a fun fact about ourselves. And then they're going to get to him, and is that little shit going to say, I killed Harambe? Is he going to? We live in a world where that is a thing that could happen. All the pieces are there that could make this a thing. It, you, that could, in theory, happen. But is it going to? And I feel bad. I feel bad for that circle of college students because the person next to him, what are they going to think? <laughs> That's the worst part about that activity, is that you just really hope that the person before you does not upstage you. Some other person down the line, sure, they can maybe say something that upstages yours, because then it gives you time to think. But if the motherfucker right next to you lays down a, I killed Harambe, and had, you know, created the most memorable meme, essentially, from 2016, how are you going to compete with that? What, you really going to tell the rest of the kids you play three instruments after he lays that one down? How would you even follow that? It doesn't make any sense. And I really hope for his sake, for Harambe's sake, that he doesn't do that. And then, of course, what's the next worst thing he's going to do? He's going to use it as on dating apps? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to be on dating apps. And, uh, you know, I don't, I've never been on a fucking app, but one of the prompts is going to be like, oh, this is say something interesting about yourself. You know, some flavor of that. And he's going to be like, I killed Harambe. And then, ooh, intrigue gets a DM. And he's like, yeah, no, that was really me. Look up articles. Look at my name. There's a match. <laughs> Just like between you and me. Dinner later. Ugh! <laughs> and to think that maybe he could get a match from that line that he killed Harambe. And then they go on a date. Sure. They hit it off. Ooh. They go to that nice Italian place they've always been wanting to go to. <gasps> they both know about it, but they both have never gone. It's their first time. Both of their first time. That's so sweet. They get to experience it together. They have that first. They listen to a song on their way home on the radio. It becomes their song. They say, ooh, well, I see you later. And they're like, that's a bit forward, but I'll entertain it. Yeah. What are you doing next weekend? And wow, they go on a second date. Oh my goodness. And it's a burgeoning, flourishing relationship that takes off and actually gets to the point where they do eventually one day get married and have a kid. And to think that that kid is only born because that motherfucker killed Harambe. Isn't that crazy? There is a world that we live in in which there could be a kid in the future that is only born because that guy killed Harambe. If he doesn't name his son or daughter, gender neutral, if he doesn't name his kid Harambe, that fucker, that fucker. (laughs) Ooh, ooh. If you're trying to seek retribution, that's the most I can offer you, sir. And if you don't take it, you leave it on the table, well, then you are banished. I don't care. I don't care. You're not seeing the pearly white gates, okay? But you are dead to me. Because that's the only way you can make up for it. But isn't that crazy? That yeah, that kid might use I Killed Harambe as an icebreaker. As a dating app little line item? That sucks. <laughs> That's awful. Another thing I talked about last week was, you know, my whole Krispy Kreme fiasco. It showed up at 10.01 when it closed at 10. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I posted, you know, this picture on Instagram. And you might have been led to believe you know, I posted this when I was in Oregon. Might have been led to believe that I went into that Krispy Kreme, but if you followed the episode after that post, you would see that, mm-mm. In fact, I didn't really get any sweets. I got one donut from Winko. 
So it just goes to show you, you know, another lesson that you can't trust anything you see on social media. Because here I was fronting, putting out this idea that I went to Krispy Kreme and yet it was closed. I didn't even set foot in a Krispy Kreme in Oregon. It's all a lie. Just like that couple that's having their second kid, they're not happy. <laughs> you go on Instagram, you see that couple post a picture of their second kid. You might think, oh my God, they got it all together. They're having a second kid. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> they think that kid's going to save their marriage. <laughs> that kid, <laughs> that kid was not a sign that the company was doing well. That kid was supposed to be the bandage that holds the dam together. Mm -mm. That thing is bursting at the seams. All that kid is doing is giving the older sibling it has. Remember, it's the second kid. All that kid is doing is giving the older one some company and someone to bond with when their parents go through a divorce. That's all that that is. <laughs> but on social media, you see it and you're like, oh, they're so happy. They got it all together. They're having two kids. Only a happy marriage would do something like that. Why would they do something that extreme? If not... For it to be because things were going well. But just like I lied to you. I put on this front like I went into a Krispy Kreme. That person having two kids is also lying to you. So be weary. Treat this as a PSA. How about that? I'm here. People often ask me. This is something people say. I swear to God. People, <laughs> people always say, what's the point of your podcast, Garv? Oh, people are always asking. And I say it's to inform. It's to teach. It's to better the listener. And I hope that with these little notes, I could do that for you. <laughs> this is since I've been back. By the way, it's 10th week in a row, right? Episode 10, or well, <laughs> I think it's like episode 97 or 98. But this is the 10th episode, consecutive episode, since I've been back from my little hiatus. So I think that deserves a like. What do you think? Just, you can let me know pretty easily if you just... Spare change? Just leave a like down there. We've been doing good, but I know we can do better. So make sure you leave a like and comment because, woo, 10 consecutive week. Look at us, folks. But this is also, since I've been back out of those 10 episodes, this is the latest I've recorded. And I don't want to disclose what time I'm recording this because it's embarrassing. Just know that the episode I filmed two times ago, I recorded that on Sunday at 11 p.m. This is later than that. And by like an amount I don't want to disclose. So this might be a little weird. I find that when I record late, like up against when I'm going to post. So basically, if I record on Sunday when it's dark out, I get really existential on these things, I find. There's a trend. Whenever I record and it's the night, ooh, they call it the Sunday scaries. The night before Monday on a work week, if I have work that Monday, you know, it's not one of those beautiful holidays where they give you Monday off. If I have to work on Monday and I record this on Sunday night, I am in a bad way mentally. So I find that it typically comes out here and I start talking about like crazy stuff like death and whatnot. But I'm going to try to steer clear of that. I'm going to stay with what's on the list. And what's on the list is something I did this week, which is going to uh, UPS. I had to drop off some packages. And of course, of course, there were people waiting outside, you know, under a tent. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. But I was going to drop off a package, which is a perfect cover because you're carrying a thing. So they can't bother you on the way in. They can't be like, oh, sir, sir. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I got too much. But then there's the way out, right? You got to go back to your car after you entered. And there's no like back door you can sneak through. You have to walk right by them. I don't like going to places in normal times. And this only reinforces that. In fact, I went to, I needed to pick up some baking ingredients earlier this week. And I went during a very normal time. It was just like right after work, basically right after 5 p.m. And my God, I didn't realize how many people were out and about during normal hours of the week. I understand we're all living our lives and whatnot and things get done. But when you see it in progress you're like wow we're really getting stuff done aren't we good on ya fellow countrymen and women but yeah i went to a like a normal grocery store 
at like 5, 17 p.m. And I didn't like it. I don't like how many people are in the parking lot. That there's that many people just walking around that you have to wait for. You know those uh, stop signs in parking lots? Sometimes I drive in parking lots. I'm like, why is this shit here? But then you go during normal operating hours and you're like, why aren't there more stop signs? I feel like there's too many... (laughs) There's too many free-flowing places that cars can drive and pedestrians can walk. I think that we need to up the stoppage here. We need to make like a old Diet Coke drinker's veins and clog this shit up. All right, that was mean for no reason. And isn't that interesting? Only when people are near cars do we say they're they're pedestrians. (laughs) Like you would never... (laughs) You would never look at a classroom full of students. See, I'm even calling them students, and you wouldn't be like, those are all pedestrians. Pedestrians is a, what is it? It is a conditional term. If you are within the proximity of a car, a vehicle, you're a pedestrian. Is that how that works? But yeah, if you're not, you're just like a person. Like if you were just in a building, in a big warehouse, I don't know what you're doing there, right? Maybe it's like a Mr. Beast video or whatever. But but let's say you were in a big warehouse. You'd just be a bunch of people. But you put one car in the middle of that warehouse. Now you're all pedestrians. How does that work? Actually, that's exactly how it works. I think I just explained it. (laughs) Someone being like, two plus two equals four. How does that work? Seems like you got it. No, that's, that's it. You showed your work and everything. That's exactly how that works. But if that was a geometric proof, that wouldn't be enough. Geometric proofs are bullshit, man. They're like, oh, A equals A, so B equals B because A equals B, so B equals A. Fuck off. How about that? All right? (laughs) I ate a frozen burger and a little smoothie in a plastic cup. So now my lungs are full of microplastics. And now you want me to do this shit? How does any of this make sense? I ate a small carton of milk this big with a frozen grocery store pizza that was shaped as a fucking square. Now you want me to do that? None of it makes sense. (laughs) But I went to the UPS and I was carrying some boxes going in, you know, selling some stuff, and I was like, whew, made it past them. But I do have to see them on the way out. I was like, fuck. (laughs) But then I left and I walked with confidence. I walked right by them. I even heard one of them say, uh, how you doing, sir? And I just, I just acted like I didn't hear it. And I'm proud of myself. Why am I proud of myself? Cause I'm a sucker. I'll be the first to admit it. All those people, you know, that are at tents, at pop-ups, all these little things. If they talk to me, I will talk to them back. When I went to New York, we left, uh, what is it called? <laughs> oh, this is embarrassing. What is the... <laughs> What is the uh, place where all the trains go? Oh my god, is it central? Oh, this is embarrassing. You know, Times Central, Times Square? Fuck. Central New York Station? Mm -mm. (laughs) You know the place where Alex from Madagascar was in the first Madagascar? The New York train... That's not important to the story. I left a building, an insignificant building that has no significance. And uh, this guy approached me and he was like, hey, can I tell you about this like foundation, whatever? And I I entertain it. I always entertain it. I always hear the person out. And that's, you know, not really effective in like big cities or whatever, but in the suburbs, oh, it's dangerous. I Uno reverse card the shit out of them because they start the conversation and ooh, I continue that conversation and I sign them up for something that they didn't even know they signed up for. You know what I'm saying? Like they're asking me for a signature, but little do they know they signed something on my clipboard because now I'm engaging in the conversation. Let me explain this. They, you know, are just vying for someone to come up to them to start that conversation and I will always take that invitation. I will go up to them if they get me. If they're like, hey, sir. I'm like, hey, what's up? And they're like, you got a second? 
yeah, I, I, I actually do have a second. That's fuck. <laughs> I, unfortunately, you know, in life, we have very little time and money, but yeah, I, I do have some time right now. I do have a second. I'm a bad liar. You know, I can omit the truth, but when you're right, you're right. I do have a second. There's no way out of this one. I could say, yes, I have a second, but I don't want to use it on you. But that's, that's too rude. I just answer what they're asking me, which is, do you have a second? Yes, I do. So I walk over. And the thing is, they will ask the normal questions and they think you're just itching to leave. But no, once I'm in, I'm in. You got me. I will have a full conversation with you to the point where you're looking at your phone being like, oh, yeah, hey, other person at this table, we got to wrap up soon. So would love to keep talking to you, sir, but we got to run. No, I'll run the timer off of you. Okay. Don't think <laughs> I got nowhere else to be. It jokes on you. I don't have a second. I have many seconds. In fact, I have an hour. Let's do this. You want to play this game? Let's play the game. I'll talk. But can you? <laughs> but I was proud of myself because I left that UPS and I didn't even look at them. I just did what I actually normally do, which is I pretended like I didn't hear them. Except it's usually not pretending. I usually don't hear people. If I don't see them, if someone says my name from behind me, I don't, nope, mm -mm. <laughs> I, I don't hear you. I'm sorry. It's essentially like you just save your breath. It's like you didn't even say anything. I need to see you. That's why if you ever call my name in a group setting, you know, if we're in a group of people, if there's cars nearby, if we're in a group of pedestrians and you call my name, mm mm. I'm awful at an amusement park, which is kind of sad because like I am on the taller side, right? So sometimes in a group, people will look for me, but then you just gotta, you gotta get to me on your own. You can't call me out. I'm like a buoy in the middle of the ocean. You have to come to me. The buoy's not moving because what are you going to call out to the buoy? It's not going to hear you. I'm like a buoy in a sea of people. <laughs> Stupid. But you know, I had a lot to, a lot of work to do a lot of packages. So I did actually go two days in a row and I was strong the first day. Like I said, I made it through. Wasn't so fortunate the second day. You see, the second day, when I was walking in, this guy complimented my shoes. I was like, ah, oh, my weakness. <laughs> and he said, uh, hey bro, I like your shoes. I was like, oh, thanks so much. I was like, I like yours too. I was like, what, those are 97s? They were Air Max 97s. I know my shoes. He didn't know that. So he said, oh, yeah, hey, they are. Thanks for knowing. He's like, you know your shoes. I was like, I do. I was like, I'm going to head in. Catch you on the out. Catch you on the way out, right? He was like, yeah, talk soon. That was all the conversation I had because when I left, I just walked past them. I'm, <laughs> I'm an asshole, man. I'm a bad person. No, I... I didn't promise that I was going to talk to him. We just talked about the quick shoe thing. And then when I came out, they were talking to someone else. So I used that as an opportunity to be like, oh, you're busy. I can't talk to you. I got to go this, this way, actually. So I'm not the strongest, but I'm getting better at just being, you know, treating people that table as subhumans. <laughs> and that's what sucks about that situation is that they set you up to either waste time or be the worst person ever because either yeah what's option a you go talk to them and now you're wasting time you already know i'm not gonna do this <laughs> so it's just a waste of time or option b you have to ignore them or blow them off and then oh now you're a bad person i can't live with that guilt they don't know what they've just done to me they've now given me something to feel guilty about for 30 minutes and then it'll wear off and it'll be fine but later that same day, I'm going to remember it. I'm going to feel guilty for another 30 minutes. So fuck you guys. Why would you? <laughs> I thought you guys were a charity organization. Oh yeah, I guess you are because you just gave me guilt for free. You're just handing it out, aren't you? I hate you guys, man. Get the fuck. Also, they were so on top of that door. I'm like, man, create some distance, okay? Don't make it to where I have to walk by you. I mean, that's, that's what is most effective about that. You, if you do have to walk, but it'd be weird if they were off in some corner, like, Hey, Hey, do you want to come up? Nope. 
Nope, not going to a weird corner with a big tent. That's weird. So they're in the right place, just at the wrong time. What's the right time, Garb? There isn't one, because I'm never wanting to talk to those people. I, you know, sometimes write down funny things I think of, and I remember, I haven't been doing it that much as I used to, but when I first started the list, one of the first jokes I wrote down was, um, if you're ever in a bad neighborhood, just carry a clipboard, because no one approaches a guy with a clipboard. We all avoid that person. So, it's true. Still, years later, anytime someone's with, you know holding a clipboard, I'm like, mm, don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. Hello. Yep. I. Mm-hmm, I'm having a good day. I don't. But I don't carry cash. Apple. Apple Pay. You have a square. That's good. Okay. Well, now I have no, <laughs> no options out of this. Fuck. Okay. Why are we such an accessible world at this point? Is it really in our best interest? Does this behoove us that there are so many ways to pay? We should get back to gold, shouldn't we? I should carry around a little, little, little brown sack. I already do. Uh, but mm, we should, <laughs> we should carry around a little brown sack with little nuggets of gold. And then when I go to the local saloon, I throw down some gold, and you say, oh, "You fool! That's pyrite. That's fool's gold." We don't take that here. Get them, boys. And then the whole saloon whips out their pistols. And they say, you going to give us some good... I don't... What What am I doing? <laughs> but I don't like going places at normal times is another thing I learned. I already talked about it earlier. But even... I talked about outside the buildings, inside the buildings. There's too much. There's too much going on. I don't like it. I don't like that weird dance you have to do. When you're looking at the cookie aisle... And someone's already there, so you have to kind of like walk past them and act like you're looking at protein bars. <laughs> Look at me. You think I'm looking at protein bars? No, you do this little dance where you're like, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you're just waiting for them to leave. <laughs> but little do you know, they wanted to look at protein bars next, and you're in their way. So you're just both kind of <laughs> just kind of loitering in this aisle. I was looking for vanilla paste. And, you know, around all the spices. And there was this this woman that was there, and she was there for like four minutes. So I like slowly inched up. I made my way down the aisle, and I just kept looking at like various flowers and powders and whatnot. And it's just, she was there for so long that I just ended up there. I just kind of, you know, rocked my way there. And then I was there, and I'm like, all right, might as well look. And then we did this weird, like, dance where she was, like, in front of me and I was behind her. But then it was weird because I was, like, closer to her cart than she was. I was like, I'm not going to steal your stuff, I swear. It's really hard, man. Life, you know? <laughs> People don't realize how tough this is. Being me. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I think, and this isn't, I'm not going to expound, expand on this idea very much, but I think that some person could finance a bunch of people to break world records. All right, let's frame this in, in terms of the Olympics. That's good. That's topical. The Olympics are happening right now. I think if someone wanted to, there are some ridiculous world records out there. Not in that they're impressive, in that they're stupid. Like, oh, the amount of, ooh, Things you can balance on your whatever, right? I think someone, if they wanted to, they won the lottery, they could do the research and find the best, the global. They could assemble a team, like a heist movie. They could assemble a team and find like the best people that have these weird, like esoteric skill sets. And then just, yeah, finance their lifestyles so that they can break world records. And then they, he can sign these people and be like, they all live under my umbrella of talent. And so technically, like, I'm the reason these world records have been broken. And I think that's a thing that could happen. If someone wanted to, if they could dedicate their life, they could be the reason that all these world records get broken. Because some of them are just sitting there. They're just waiting to be broken. Whenever someone's YouTube channel starts dying and they're like, let's go for a world record, that's they're going to go to that. They're going to look up what's the weirdest shit. Where's the longest... <laughs> cornhole throw what's what's that world record the longest cornhole throw i'll do that how about that that'll probably revive my channel for about three days 
and then I'll be forgotten. Just like any news story today. <laughs> I talked about this years ago, but it's really, I was telling someone this week, it is not healthy. I have, you know, the Weather Channel app on my phone, which some people say is unhealthy in its own. Like, why don't you just use the normal Apple? I don't know. I don't know. At this point, <laughs> when people say, why don't you just use the iPhone weather app instead of the Weather Channel app? I genuinely, I don't know. I, I don't have a good reason. And then people always ask a follow-up. Then why do you, I de- see, I, it's just the same question in different packaging. I don't know. I just don't do that. So now it's just basically a talking point. I just like the interface of the... No, I don't even... I don't even like the interface of the Weather Channel app. I take that back. It's just... It's what I use, so I use it. (laughs) It (laughs) That's like a thing in tech, right? All these, you know, engineers and salespeople are so confused. They're like, why are they using my product? It's so much better. Don't you guys understand how how much better the Samsung camera is? How much better the Google Pixel camera is? All right, nerd. <laughs> no one gives a shit about that. I have an iPhone. I'll get the next one. That's it. I don't care how many specs or data sheet and skew comparisons you show me. I don't give a fuck. What's the next iPhone? How many colors does it come in? And can I take pictures? Does it have 0.5? All right. I'm happy. Once you guys put 0.5 on the front camera, that's all I'm looking for. Okay? Once I can do that, I'm content. And I'll always buy the next iPhone. <laughs> when I was younger, um, adults used to open packages, right? <laughs> and when I grew older, they stopped opening packages. What a weird idea. Why does that happen? No. When I was younger, let's say I was at a baseball game, right? And at the end of the baseball game, uh, the way it would work, I don't know if you guys played Little League, but the way it would work is every week there would be a different parent or different family assigned snacks that week. But usually it was just kind of the first, the two team moms that would be like, we're going to do it. This is our duty. This is kind of our thing. We didn't get into the PTA, so we're going to do this. This is going to be our thing. We get to tell the other mothers about, you know, when we have our weekly chats our monthly chats, and then we all brag about our kids, and then our little personal achievements, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I bring the best snacks. You know, the other team, they have shitty-ass snacks. (laughs) But, you know, typically, actually, I think the team mom, or team moms that bring the snacks, they'll alternate. And they would always set out the snacks, you know, we would do our post-game huddle and then we all go over to the bleachers and they have the snacks laying out and the boxes you know they would have granola bars cosmic brownies whatever they would have and they would always be in the you know the big boxes let's say it was famous amos cookies they would come in let's just say like a 24 box 24 little packages in this big box and the way these team moms would always open the box and like fold lids into the box and Maybe rip the lid perfectly so it's just like an open box. It was so perfect. And it was often, to me, indicative of how I would feel about that parent. Like you ever see, it's, um, you know, <laughs> what, I, what I'm going to say here might be a little sexist, which is, <laughs> which is a great opening. That's a great, if anyone ever says that, oh, can't wait to hear what they're about to say. You ever go on a date with a guy? And he says, uh, you know, I'm a, what I'm about to say might be a little sexist, but uh, hear me out. I make good points. <laughs> That's like when people say, you know, no offense, but stop there. Don't say the rest. If, <laughs> if there's a potential for there to be offense, you know what the least offensive thing you could do is? Nothing. So do that. And guess what? It's the easiest thing you can do. But no. I jokingly, I guess, say this is going to be sexist because I'm going to compare like moms versus dads. Dads, for some reason, when they open a box, it looks like they've never seen a box in their entire life. Like, oh, how the fuck do I open this thing? And they rip it open. They open boxes like fucking Casey Neistat. That's what they do. And I feel like the way they would open a box would often be a direct reflection of, "Mm, am I going to like that person or not? And I'm not saying that either moms or dads were, you know, 
a safe. Like, sure, there were some moms that were opening shit boxes. <laughs> What's a shit box? They were opening a box in like a shitty way. And I know there were some dads that were opening boxes in a very neat, proper way. And I just found it. I like those dads. I like those moms that would open boxes in a very neat way. Often, their character would be very in line with the way they open a box. And the people that did it, like, savages. <laughs> I would quickly learn that oh, I don't like them. Not because of the box thing, but for other reasons. And then you look back and you're like, oh, the signs were there. <laughs> so I found that, that the way adults, when I was younger, would open boxes is how I would feel about them. And I think it still translates, or it still carries over to my adult life. Often the ways that someone opens a box makes me feel a certain way. Not because I have any feelings towards the box, because... <laughs> nope, I'm going to leave that alone. But not, <laughs> not because I have any feelings towards the box, just because I'm like... What is it? Well, what, is, what is that? See, basically, let's try to break it down. The person that recklessly opens up a box, I'm like, what is... What is so... <laughs> What is so high priority in your life that you really need to get to the contents of that box as soon as possible? Why can't you just take the extra minute and do it nice, you know? And then we can maybe reuse the box. That's nice. It shows that you also have that in mind, you know? You're a reusable person. Not you, but you like recycling. That's what I mean. I'm not... <laughs> and so I often found that, yes... The way they did a little thing was indicative of the larger thing, who they were. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Anyways, we have a few minutes left here, and I want to go off on this point. Uh, friends are not for calling you out. They are for feeding into your delusions. I could probably talk about this for a while. Maybe I'll pick it up later. But I want to make the point here. I will never tell a friend they're wrong. <laughs> If a friend is telling me something, I'll never be like, oh, are you sure about that? Ooh, do you want to do that? Is that the right thing to do? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'll never tell you that. I will always tell you, eh, that's a great idea. But that's the thing. I never even really say that. I just, I just give you the forum to speak. Because it's not my job. As a friend, friends are not supposed to be like, mm, are you sure that's the right choice. Friends should not have your best interest in mind. They should just be enabling you. <laughs> and maybe this is, you know, me outing myself as a bad friend, but I'll never tell you the right thing to do. I will listen to you and I will say, yep, that's good. <laughs> Unless you specifically ask me, Garv, what do you think about this? I want your opinion. Then I'll give you like a like a diet watered down version of my real opinion, but I will never tell you my real opinion because it's I, why does it matter? You're not me. Why would you want to live your life in alignment with what I do and vice versa? Right? You wouldn't want to live or like, <laughs> I don't think I should force my way of living on you in the same way. You wouldn't want to live your life how I live it. So why, why do we need to tell each other? That's for family. Family should tell you the harsh truths. Friends should stray away. <laughs> they should not. Think about it. Who are your favorite friends? Are they the ones telling you, mm, are we sure about this, guys? Mm, do you think that's a good idea? Mm -mm. Your friends, your best friends, are the ones that are like, oh, yeah, fucking do it. <laughs> Text that person. Why not? <laughs> and I think that's the right place for a friend. I don't think you should look to friends for guidance or advice or any kind of thing resembling a moral compass. I think friends are there so you can have fun. <laughs> and again, this might be me outing myself as a bad friend, but I'm very clear with this. <laughs> I don't put on this front that I'm going to have your best interest in mind. Now, I'm going to step in. I'm going to intervene if I need to. Like if someone's like, I'm thinking about doing a lot of drugs, you know, I'll say, well, what drugs? Let's hey, they hear him out. All right, I'm not going to shut him down immediately. What drugs? Like hard ones. I'm like, hmm. Well, are you doing it with someone that's done them before? Like, will they be able to guide you? You know, so I'll, I'll feel it out. 
there's sometimes where I'll be like, I don't, I don't think you should do hard drugs. I mean, that's just me though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'll add that at the end. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's what I do, but you're not me. So what do I, <laughs> maybe that's in the cards for you. I don't know. I'm just playing with a different deck. Who am I to say? <laughs> But no, if my friends are endangering themselves, I'll step in. I'll be like, ooh, hey, listen, I care about you, but but all that other shit, mm -mm, I'm not going to have opinions. I'm there for a good time. This is a judgment-free zone. I'm never going to express judgment out. We're, we all have judgment. Those people, they're like, oh, I don't judge people. Yes, you do. You just know better than <laughs> to say anything out loud. And that's me. Of course I have judgments, but I'll never let you know. Because I'm a good friend. <laughs> if people told people how they felt about them, they wouldn't be friends. So we're all liars. <laughs> so yes, if you are a friend that calls your friends out, stop. <laughs> That's my kind of advice today. Don't be a good friend. There's no time for that. Also, what? What, is someone paying you? Don't do it. It's not your job. Stop working pro bono, okay? No one's asking for that. <laughs> you know, as adults, I thought we would understand that. You know, if no one's paying you, why are you doing the work? But still, I see a lot of adults stepping in being like, hmm, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, yeah? That's interesting. Who? Who asked? I, I, don't, I don't think I heard any askers around. That's a that's also a very juvenile joke, by the way. It's the whole who. You open up to your friend, and they're like, who? I'm like, what? They're like, who asked? I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll just go fuck myself. That's cool. That is awesome. Yeah. No, I'll just... I'll just reevaluate this whole friendship, and maybe I will tell you how I feel about you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to give you the Diet Coke anymore. I'm going to give you Coke Zero because there won't be any sugar in what I say because it's not going to be sweet. I hope this was an okay episode. Again, like I said, it's very late. It's dangerously late. I don't want to say how late it is. But hopefully this episode comes out today. I mean, the day, uh, <clears throat> uh, when it's supposed to come out, which is Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And uh, I will talk at you next week. Okay? Bye.